Hello and welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Gina Borgia and I am so glad you are joining us today. At National Geographic, we know the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling can change the world. This Explorer Classroom YouTube show connects students around the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. Today, our Explorer is Dr. Allison Crisitiello. Allison is joining us today live from the Perpetual Planet Expedition to Mount Logan, the highest point in Canada. She is using a device called a BGAN to connect with us today. It connects to the internet through a satellite connection, making it possible for Allison to talk to us from the mountain. Allison is an ice core scientist and a high altitude mountaineer. This means she can climb to extremely high places to retrieve ice core samples that she drills out of the deep ice. When Allison is studying ice cores, she's looking to see what we can learn about our climate from long ago. But before we get into today's lesson, let's quickly welcome our viewers who have registered in advance and are joining us today from around the globe. Our shout outs for today go to Locke Elementary School, Stratford District Secondary School, C.W. Shipley Elementary, The Metzger Family, Blorlia Middle School, Broward Virtual School, The Nelson Sella Family, The Dalton Family, St. Elias Community School, CSSC Mercier, Live at Earth, The Guthrie Family, March Academy, Rother Glenn, Emanuele Lugo Family, IBM Montes Elementary School, and the O'Bannon Elementary School, and of course, all of our homeschools out there. We are so thrilled to have you here. And with that, we're gonna get our Explorer Classroom started. It is time to hear from Allison all about her expedition to Mount Logan. Can you hear us, Allison? I can hear you. Wonderful. Allison, can you introduce yourself quickly and tell us where you are? I can, yes. Um, my name is Allie Crisitello, and um, as Gina said, I'm an ice core scientist, and I'm also a high altitude mountaineer. And um, those two things kind of have come together really nicely with this project um, <laughs> because we are on Mount Logan, which is Canada's highest peak. It's um, just shy of 20,000 feet. And to work up high on the summit plateau where I'm standing right now uh, safely requires climbing the mountain. Uh, you can't just fly up to this because our bodies have to adjust slowly. So, so we climbed Logan up to the summit plateau where we are now. And um, now we're drilling an ice core up here. <laughs> oh, so exciting. So how long have you been? Oh, how long have we been at sea? Um, the, the climb itself took about 10 days. So we flew into um, the Logan's base camp, which is around 9,500 feet. And then we climbed, I think it was um, 10 days. We got stopped by a storm for one or two days. Um, so about 10 days after arriving at base camp, we had climbed up here to the summit plateau, um, up and over this high call, it's called PR call, that's at 18 and a half thousand feet. And then we dropped down just a little bit to where our ice coring site is here. Uh, which is at about 17 and a half thousand feet. Wow. Okay. I'm sure everybody is wondering what is the weather like? How cold is it where you are? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Someone told me my lips look purple. <laughs> it's pretty cold today. Um, I think with it's quite windy as well. Probably with the wind chill, it's around minus 40. The tempers in general on the summit plateau are sort of between minus 20 and minus 40 Celsius. Um, but it's, it's a pretty, I'll show you around in a minute if I can. It's, it's sort of this really broad, exposed plateau. So you can't really hide from the wind. Um, it makes it much colder than the temperature would otherwise be. Wow. So what are you and your team doing to stay warm? <laughs> Um, in some ways it's actually easier when you're climbing to stay warm, you know, because you're, you're moving all day for, you know, eight to 
10 hours a day. Um, to stay warm once we're up here, uh, I mean, a lot of it requires appropriate clothing, big puffy jackets and puffy pants and the right, they're just the right clothing really. Um, but the other thing that we did because we sort of are now living up here at suit is I'm, I'm in a big home tent, so we don't climb with things like this. They're too heavy. Um, but when the ice core drill was helicoptered up here, we had, um, two of these big dome tents brought up here and they really help us also to keep warm and, um, and also, you know, our, our little tents for climbing, we've got sort of two people sleeping in each tent kind of thing. And you're cooking in a tiny little space in the front, in the little vestibule. And so up here we have these big tents so that we can all cook together. It, it, it gets a little warmer in, in the dome tent. And, um, and I'll show you as well, the other dome is over the drill, which makes it possible to drill in really bad weather. All right, would you prefer to take us on a little tour right now or talk a little bit about the drilling? Yeah. You can decide. Let mm -hmm. me try to, let, let me try to show you around. I know I, I can't go too far, but I'm gonna try to show you around because it's very beautiful despite being very, okay. Here we go. Gina, you just cut me off if, um, if I've gone too far. Okay, so. <laughs> Behind me is Leo. And also this is the, the, the summit plateau behind me. It looks kind of broad and flat. Um, let's see. You can see the tiny, tiny tents here. Those are our sleeping tents. So we've got two people per tent down there. And then because we're staying up here for a little while, um, we also, we wanna fly out all of our waste, even human waste. So there's a little tent halfway between me and the sleeping tents. And that's our little bathroom, <laughs> just a little floorless tent. Um, so that's kind of, um, oh, I don't know. It's, it's pretty close, maybe, maybe 30 meters away. But what we've got this way up here is what I was talking about. So here's a big dome tent. And behind it, this peak here is Russell Peak. And we can't see it from the true summit of Mount Logan is sort of hidden behind here. Um, so it's in that direction. So I'll walk over here in a second, but this is our, this is our drilling dome. And we've got a whole bunch of ice core boxes here, our generator for powering the drill. And then this is our other smaller living dome I was just talking about that makes it a little bit easier to stay up here. I'm gonna to try to show you in, inside the drill tent real quick here. I don't think I can go All too right. far. Everything looks okay. good so far. Can you see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, you see the three drillers? <laughs> yeah. And this is a good moment. They're just about to pull the drill up to the surface. Um, so this drill, it's called the Canadian Eclipse Drill, and it's a tipping tower drill, which means that they pull the ice out at the end, and the whole thing swings to the vertical drilling down the entire drill sort of pivots. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, the drill is eight meters down. This is perfect. Can you still see okay, Gina? It looks like it's a little frozen right now. Um, oh. Let's give it a minute to kind of recalibrate. Okay, I can start to see you move again. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think I went a little too far. Can I zoom in? Oh. If you can see in the door, oh, this is so perfect. Um, I'm going to wait one second because what they're going to do, if you can see the big drill coming up out of the hole now, and then it hits a little stopper point at the top, and then they're going to swing the whole drill toward us. So we'll be able to see the ice in the end, and you'll see it, um, how, it, how, it how the entire thing pivots. Wow. Okay. Perfect. And we've been running yes, it like this. Um, yeah, this is lucky because yeah, I think we're about 182 meters down. <laughs> so each run takes, you know, you're so okay. Can you see the drill? Yes. I think I've hit hit the maximum uh, distance. Mm. Wow, we can see I've it. Gone too far. Yeah. Okay. 
I think it's right at, at the maximum distance I can go. Um, but if you're able to see it, I'll stay outside for a minute too, because I'll pull the ice out. Um, here we go. So the inner drill barrel that has a spiral around it called a flight comes out of the outer drill barrel. And then you, they rest it down so they can remove the ice. You still see okay, Gina? We can still see. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so so Rebecca here is pushing a meter of ice out of the inner drill barrel <laughs> into, <laughs> into the tent where there's a little core catcher area and a small core processing area. And then you just do that over and over here about 280 times. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked if my work's repetitive, I guess it is. Um, okay, I'm gonna just stand a little bit cl closer to the beacon. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's what it looks like here. Um, yeah, it's quite bright out, but you know, it's very beautiful. It's a, a big broad plateau just kind of ringed by, ringed by big peaks. And uh, yeah. we've got 10, 10 full ice core boxes here ready to fly. <laughs> Wow, the scenery is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm hoping, could you tell us a little bit about what you hope to find when you study these ice core samples that you're drilling? That's a great question. What do, what do we hope to find? Well, in some ways, what we hope to find is, is something I can't tell you, like some sort of discovery we, we couldn't even anticipate. Um, the, oh, thanks, Reba. I'll just interrupt to show you. <laughs> We're in pure ice now. Oh, wow. Thanks for bringing that over. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's, um, it's so hard to succinctly answer that question because there are so many things that we could learn from this ice core. Um, in general, because of where we're sitting, we're actually very close to the ocean. Um, we're right, right off the Gulf of Alaska. So the location of Mount Logan allows us to learn something about a um, really, really long-term climate in the North Pacific. Um, that's something that we couldn't learn from a polar ice core. We couldn't learn that um, from even a, even a, say, a Canadian high Arctic or a Greenland core. Um, where, where Mount Logan sits on the planet is a very special place for, for telling us something about climate in the North Pacific. Um, and, you know, to get more specific, there's, there's, so many things we're going to measure and and hopefully learn you know one of them of course that we almost always do is we measure oxygen construct temperature in the past um another really interesting thing that we'll use this core for um that's very important in this um sort of the the northwest region of north america is reconstructing forest fire history over very long time periods or tens of thousands of years um, to learn, you know, to really put into context our current climate and, 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 you know, how, how humans have affected more recent decades of climate um, and, and compare that over a much longer time period. Again, tens mm -hmm. of thousands of years, this record will hopefully be. Wow. So incredible. Can you tell us a little bit about the team that you have there with you and maybe talk about the importance of doing this kind of work as a team? Yeah, I love that question. Um, this work can't be done without a team. <laughs> um, we started as a team of seven and two team members left after we did sort of uh, a radar survey, like a very final site selection survey for where we were gonna drill. So our drill team is five. Um, but yeah, we started out as seven, which is, I'd say it's really necessary. It sounds like a lot of people, but um, there are so many things to deal with when you're working at really high altitudes like this. Um, you just have to think about the inevitability of um, perhaps some people having issues with altitude and having to go down, things like this. So um, it, I think it would probably be unusual to end with the same number of people you start with. It's just... Um, there's so many complications with altitude. <laughs> we got five people here now. So there's myself. Um, there's 
Etienne, who is actually the, he's an engineer and he's actually the person who built the drill we have here. He's totally invaluable. Yesterday, he took the motor and transmission of the drill apart, something that none of the rest of us can do. Um, so there's Etienne here, drill engineer. And then we have Rebecca, she's a geologist and she's sort of my um, personal climbing partner as well, which to me on a trip like this is, is invaluable just to have someone who's um, incredibly strong climber, skier, worker. She's great at drilling as well. Um, and then we have Brad Markle and Dom Winsky, and they're both from the States. They're both um, ice core scientists as well with lots of experience drilling ice cores at altitude. They've drilled on um, Denali, on Mount Hunter in Alaska. Um, so they have this great background as well um, in sort of high altitude mountaineering and, and ice core science. So that's the, the team of five that we have up here now. Awesome. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about, is there special training that you and the team have to go through before you embark on an expedition like this? <laughs> I think everyone's different and I'm kind of a funny person to ask. Um, because I don't, I don't ever really adhere to a specific training protocol, but I think all of us are just very, very active people. Um, and I think, here, I'm going to go in the tent. This is going to freeze. Um, and have all, you know, of course, taken this project very seriously. So in our own, in our own lives and hometowns where we were leading up to this, you know, everyone was doing their own, their own training program, whatever that looked like, um, to make sure just that they were as physically fit as possible to be able to, to do this work. Amazing. Okay. I think we, we can see you. You're back in the tent, staying warm, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering, could you talk a little bit about what your days are like now? Like what what time are you waking up? How much sleep are you getting? How many hours are you devoting to the drilling? Just kind of put us in your shoes for the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, okay. Day in the life of drilling up here. We, um, so we're five people, but we also, we do have the, um, a media team here of three and we've, we've stolen one of them to make our drill team sit to make our drill teams six people. And what's, what that's done is allow us to have two teams of three. So All right, Allison, I think we may have lost you for a minute. Let's just give it a second to reconnect. We'll just hang tight and we'll hope that Allison can reconnect with us in a few seconds here. As you can see, she's live up there on the mountain. So we'll just bear with our connection. And I'm gonna check some things out, see if I can do anything. Okay, she dropped out of the call. So what we're gonna do is, oh, she's coming back in. Let's see. Allison, can you hear us okay? Oh. It's back. We have you back. Great. Sorry, I flipped out. No worries. I think we can we can see you better this time around. So it seems like the connection's a little stronger. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Um. So I was describing a day. Yeah. Yeah. So we we ping pong between the, the two teams of three. Yeah. So that you can, I'd say one of the hardest things with the altitude is, is sleep. No one is sleeping very well. Um, so it's really nice to be able to have breaks in the middle of the day and try to get some sleep in, in the day. Um, it's just hard with the lower amount of oxygen up here to, to sleep for very long. 
Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's what it looks like. You're basically drilling or trying to get rest back and forth, back and forth <laughs> from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Wow, how much longer will you be up there uh, conducting the drilling? Well, we keep trying to estimate this. <laughs> um, so today's Thursday and we're at 182 meters. I think by Sunday, we should hit bottom. Um, not Sunday, then first half of the day, the day on Monday. And then will everybody climb down together or will some people travel by helicopter down? Or what, what's that process like? Oh, good question. Yeah. Um, no, the two folks who had to leave early did leave by helicopter, but that's, that was sort of out of necessity. Um, we will have our whole team, our, our team of five and the media team of three. So all eight of us will ski from where we are on the summit plateau all the way back to base camp all together once the drilling is done, but also once all of the ice has been picked up, I think you could see the pile of, um, a full ice core boxes behind me. So we've already got maybe four or five heli flights worth of ice here waiting to get out. So we may have to wait a little bit for everything to get flown off before we all ski off the mountain. And I just have this great image of you all launching off the mountain on your skis. (laughs) How exciting that must be to head down after a successful mission. Yeah, it's actually a really fun ski. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's crazy for a mountain that takes, you, well, yeah, I guess it took us 10 days, but it can take, you know, a couple of weeks. It takes maybe probably on average 10 hours to ski down. Uh, it's just so fast on the way down. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Wow. Okay. That, I hope you stay safe. That sounds like a lot of fun. All right. I think, you know, Allison, let's end on the question that we ask all of our explorers here. Do you have any advice for the young explorers out there? Advice for the young explorers to explore. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I think, um, yeah, the very, the very best thing we can all do is, is, you know, grow our appreciation for for the natural world and the places that, that we find we're passionate about and, and spend more time outside in, in those places. Um, and I guess the only other thing I, I would say, you know, as a general scientist um, in this time is, is that um, we all can really make a difference by choices we make in our own lives to, to have a smaller footprint and a smaller impact. Um, on the planet and, you know, individuals together make a a huge difference. We, we all make a difference. Awesome. Thank you so much for that advice. And thank you for connecting with us today in the middle of your expedition. We so appreciate you taking the time to be here. (laughs) Thanks. That was so fun. Awesome. And thank you to all the students for your thoughtful questions. And of course, thank you teachers for making these things happen for your classrooms. So we just have a few announcements before we let you all go. We are nearing the end of our school year here at Explorer Classroom with only a few weeks left, actually a few shows left. uh, And you won't want to miss what we have in store before school is out. We have uh, Explorer uh, Alia Pierce, who is joining us next week to talk all about the importance of oral storytelling and her participation in the Into the Depths podcast. And then after that, you won't want to miss a live from Explorers Festival at the National Geographic headquarters in DC event Mm -hmm. the following week on June 6th. So you can register your student group for a shout out during the event and a chance to be on screen with us at natgeoed.org backslash explore classroom. I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for being here with us. Let's all unmute our microphones and give Allison a big, big thank you from all of us here. Thank you so much, Allie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.